Hey, loyal YouTube visitors, or first-time YouTube visitors. I'm Scott Toyguru Nightlick. I'm a collector and a toy-making professional. And I make a lot of videos about how toys are made. And a lot of the videos I've made have talked about tooling. And by tooling, I don't mean these things. Tooling in terms of toy making is the mold that is put inside of an injection molding machine and have hot plastic injected into it. This is what an injection molding machine looks like. The tool is that giant thing in the center made of steel or aluminum or some other really heavy material, unobtainium maybe, and out of the tool comes something made of plastic that's in the shape of the mold. You know, like those old Play-Doh molds we had as kids in the 80s, for those of us who were kids in the 80s. And the thing about tooling is it's very, very expensive. It can cost anywhere from thirty to $100,000 to tool a typical 3 and 3 fourth to 6 inch action figure. So obviously these sunk capital investment costs need to be amortized, and that's why you see lots of things like redecos of existing figures, because you've already paid for the tool, and it's a one-time sunk cost. And while tools are used to make lots of things made of plastic, and toys and action figures are one of them, there are other ways tooling is used, and there are alternatives. And I get a lot of questions about this. So a quick review, though, on how the plastic injection molding process works is that when a toy comes out of the injection mold, it's usually attached to other pieces in that tool on what's called a sprue or tree. And if you've done model making, you probably have seen these. they basically plastic pieces attached to others, and you twist them apart. Now, the fewer parts a figure has, meaning the less articulation, the less expensive it is to make. And labor is a huge, huge cost of the action figure toy making process. So if you have a figure with more articulation, even in the same scale, you have to think of how many parts are needed. Every one of those joints is a different part, and usually it's two-sided. So you have way more parts in a figure like that. The more parts you have, the more assembly is needed. So a five-point of articulation figure costs way less than tooling a fully articulated figure with, you know, 20 or 30 points of articulation, simply because you have fewer parts that have to be assembled. Now, ideally, all of the parts come out of the same tool, and you can assemble the item all at once. Sometimes it takes multiple tools, depending on how big the item is. Play sets may take multiple tools, which is why they're so expensive. Now, what if you need a lot of the same thing. You want to be able to replicate the same thing over and over again. Well, that can happen too. And that's based on capacity, when what is called double tooling. What is double tooling? Well, guitars that are like double guitars, you know? Yeah, it's basically what it sounds like. It's when you make two tools for the exact same toy. Why would you do this? Well, maybe you have a major movie release, and you need to produce a lot of a product, like a lot. Maybe it's because the same figure is appearing in a multi-pack and also needed to be released in a single. Or maybe the movie is so popular that you just physically need to produce a huge amount, and a tool can only produce so many units per day. That's what capacity is. It all depends on the machine and the environment and the factory, how many units can be made per day per tool, but you might have to double tool, which means you're paying $100,000 twice for the same figure. All right, so the big question is, are there other options? What if you don't want a tool? Can you save money by scanning things or, you know, that type? And that doesn't quite work because scanning is actually something you do in the sculpting phase. So most action figures are sculpted by hand, meaning someone talented, more talented than I, will go in and actually create a prototype figure out of wax, and they're usually held together by pins. They look like an action figure, but they're not articulated like an action figure. They're just held together. Then the factory has to take that wax sculpt and create the actual functionality so that the articulation will work. So here's an example of how a wax sculpt would then be created at uh, the vendor in order for the articulation to work. So while, yes, sculpting is a time-consuming process, it's way less expensive than tooling. And one alternative to sculpting is scanning. But scanning, like something that Gentle Giant does, is not a replacement for tooling. Scanning is a replacement for sculpting. So the phase where you're creating the look of the character, that wax sculpt, whether you're doing that by hand and sculpting it, 
or you're doing it via computer using 3D rendering or scanning, like this gentleman is being scanned here in this room, that has nothing to do with tooling. That is just the process of physically creating the computer file or the wax sculpt that will then be used to create a tool. The tools are then created by hand using that wax sculpt. Sometimes computers are used, but for the most part, they're still actually carving out the tool by hand based on either a digital scan of a character, like Chewbacca here, or based on the wax sculpt that a sculptor has created. So that's how sculpting and scanning comes in. That's a whole other part of the process. So what if you don't want a tool? Well, you could look at blow molding. Ever heard of blow molding? Yes, it is a process. Now, blow molding is different from tooling. It's not going to produce something as sturdy, but you can still get toys out of it, and there are some clever ways of doing this. So you've probably seen blow molded things. Technically, a lot of bottles, a lot of, like, uh, you know, soap and bubble baths are use this, a lot of minifigures, a lot of kind of like, remember those little things you used to have as a kid and sometimes they'd have a hole in it because they were hollow on the inside? That's what blow molding is. It creates something hollow, as opposed to tooling can create something solid. So when would you need something that's hollow? Well, not that much in toys. Blow molding is used by heating the plastic into a hollow compartment. Then the mold closes around and it's gripped in place. Compressed air is blown into what's called the parison, which inflates the plastic almost like a balloon. The parison it fills it with mold, the product is trimmed and removed, and there you have your finished product, blow molding. So blow molding is a great solution for a lot of consumer products that need to be hollow on the inside, like bottles and shampoo, you know, toppers. And this is a blow molding machine, a little different from a tooling machine, but still takes up a lot of space in your living room. I don't suggest you invest in one. And it's used mainly to make things that hold other things, like, again, bottles that are going to hold water, or those toppers for shampoo bottles for kids. It can be used for making large things and small things, but they're always going to come out hollow on the inside, which means the thickness of the material has to be essentially big enough to, to keep the material in, but not too thick that it's going to affect it. And that's why when you see little sort of chachi toys that are hollow on the inside, that's a blow molded toy. And you can deco blow molding, but it doesn't work as well. This does not work for action figures. Action figures do not work when they are hollow because they will fall apart. And you can't articulate things that are blow molded. So that's the other reason they can't be used for action figures. There's no way you can take hollow pieces and get them to articulate and stay together the way a plastic injection molded toy would work. You can do slug figures and you can even paint them like these ducks here that are blow molded. So you can do a lot of fun things, but it's not always a solution. One thing I have seen blow mold used for is dioramas. And I remember a couple years back, a decade now, Hasbro put out some Star Wars sets that were really cool how they use blow molding. So in this disturbance at the Lars homestead, the base of the actual house there that Baru and the Womp Rat are on, yes, that is a Womp Rat, is blow molded. It's hollow on the inside, or rather it doesn't even have a fourth wall. Or the same kind of time period, they put out a Sarlacc pit set, and they meaning Hasbro. And that whole bottom section that was to replicate Tatooine sand, it went around the plastic molded Sarlacc pit. So this was the Sarlacc pit, all made of plastic, uh, some of it PVC to be bendable, some of it harder plastic, but plastic it is. And then you could put this blow molded sand thing, like base, around the Sarlacc pit to create the diorama. So that whole, that whole thing that's around the plastic is blow molded. So it, you know, it's very thin, it's thin-walled, and it does work well for, you know, things like dioramas, but again, there's no articulation in that sand. It's just a, a, a solid piece. So there are clever ways of using it. And the thing about tooling is, much like milk or old sneakers, there is an expiration date. There is a shelf life. And, you know, like Fifty Shades of Grey, you can't keep it out on the shelf forever. It's going to get old and stale. And there are things that go wrong with tooling when it's used too much. Everything from air bubbles to scoring to shrinkage in the plastic. So tooling does have a shelf life. So you can't use it forever. 
And if you want to store it, that's also slightly difficult because they're very heavy, cumbersome, and it costs a lot of money to store things like that, which is why most tools wind up at the bottom of Hong Kong Harbor, either as anchors or they're just kind of tossed in. Hey, try scuba diving there sometime. You'd be surprised what you can find. I hope this video is enlightening about some alternatives to tooling and other miscellaneous questions. If I've missed any and more is needed, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to do a follow-up. Thanks for watching.